we're going to take a look at programming dynamic web pages. Dynamic web pages uh, will accept user input and manipulate it. Uh, we can also read to and write from databases. And the particular language we're going to use is called ASP.NET. To program in ASP, we're going to use Microsoft's free tool, Microsoft Visual Studio Express 2013 for the web. Again, it's free software you can download from Microsoft. Uh, and the installation instructions can be found on ICON. After you get it installed, you will need a Microsoft account to log in and activate the software. And you can see that in the corner once you have it running. To create a new website, I'll go to File, New Website. I want to make sure Visual Basic is chosen. I can choose a framework. I want to choose Framework 451 since it's the most current. I want to make an empty website. And I want the, the website to reside on my desktop. This tool does not like mapped drives, so it's difficult to work out of your H drive or drive you've mapped to instruct. You get really unusual behavior. If I don't like this path, I can find a different path. I'll call mine test site one. This should probably be somewhat specific to the application you're working with. Yes, I'll go ahead and create it. And then I can see that I now have a folder called test site one on my desktop. And if I look over here, I can see test site one as my root directory. I'm in the Solution Explorer. I've got a couple of other options, and when I connect to databases later, I'll have a Database Explorer, but most of our time will be spent in Solution Explorer. I want to create a new, uh, new web page inside of our website here. So I'll right click and add, add a new item. Visual Basic should be checked. I'm going to choose Web Form. That's what uh, ASP calls their dynamic web pages. I can name it anything I want down here. For now, I'm going to just leave the default name in place. Um, you'll want to make sure that there's no spaces or any weird characters in here. So letters, numbers, uh, and underscores only here. I'll leave the check to place the code in a separate file, and I'll click Add. And I can now see that my new web page is inside of my website. And if I were to look at the folder, there's my new web page. Now notice there's also another file that comes along with it, .vb. This is the code behind file. So you'll have one file dot, that ends in ASPX, that is your web page. And then you'll have another file with the exact same name, .vb, since we're using Visual Basic, that's the code behind file. And you can also see that if you expand the arrow. Now, once I click the file, I can see that it opens a tab across the top here so I can work on it. Uh, and this should look pretty familiar to you. We have three different ways to view this. We have the source view. We have design view and a split view. If I go to design view and I get right in the middle, I can enter some text. And when I switch to source view, I can see that text. Now notice the web page. Uh, we have this less than percent at. Uh, this is an escape character that says this is not HTML. This is going to be ASP. And this line right here at the top is put in there by default. Uh, it tells us what language we can expect. And it tells us what the name of our code behind file will be. I have some other stuff that looks very much like HTML. But I do have a couple of uh, tags in here, run at server. And run at server just means when the ASP engine receives this page, it will look in that run at server to see if there is ASP inside of that um, item that it needs to manipulate. So here, 
this form, form one has a run at server. It will look inside a form one to see if there's any ASP in there. And if there is, it will interpret it. Then pass that information down to the web server as text and then back to the user. After I've made some changes to the web page, you'll notice this little asterisk. That means the page needs to be saved. So I can save it. And then I can view it in the browser. If I right click the page, I can view in browser. As part of the installation of Visual, uh, uh, Visual Studio Express, you get a web server that is able to interpret the ASP. So you get the ASP engine with that. Um, that web server turns on when you view in the browser and it turns off when you close. Uh, so it's not a persistent web server. Uh, it doesn't cause persistent security holes or anything like that. If I were to go in and manipulate again, I need to save it. I can simply refresh and see my changes. Now, the other thing you get as part of the Visual Studio Express installation uh, is a personal SQL server, uh, but we're not going to use that much. We're going to be connected to the enterprise SQL server. When I want to add some ASP controls, I can use my toolbox to do that. All of these, except this one that says HTML, refer to ASP controls. So in HTML toolbox, we have true HTML uh, inputs, but up here, they're all ASP. To put one in my web page, I can drag and drop. Or I can put my cursor where I would like it to go and double click it. Either way puts it over there. Now we're dealing with object oriented programming. So over here we have our different classes. Once it's put on the work service, then we have an individual object and that object has to be uniquely identified. So if I click the, the object I just placed and I look over here in the properties window, I can see the properties for that object. It has a dot text property that currently says label. I would like that to be blank. I don't want anything in there, so I'm going to just delete it. And it has an ID and I'm concerned about this. I want this to be uh, unique to this object on my page. I like to start out my labels with LBL. So I know it's a label and then a friendly name. And when I make those changes, I notice that now the, the text is gone and the label ID is used in place of the text. And I can see my label ID up here behind this pound sign. So this is sitting here and waiting for uh, the code behind to, to manipulate it or to write into it. I need an event to fire. And when that event fires, then I want the, the action to happen with this label. So the event that I want is on a page load. So when a user first browses this page and it loads, that's going to fire an event. So in order to create that event, I'm going to come up and choose page events and page load. And here's my subroutine that will fire when this page loads. When this page loads, what do I want to happen? I want LBL, welcome, the text property to say welcome to my site. So what will happen when default.aspx first loads up, the, the client will come uh, and request default.aspx. There'll be a get request. 
the web server will see default.aspx and it knows that it needs to hand it to the ASP engine. When it hands the page to the ASP engine, the ASP engine is going to look and see that we're reading VB and this is the code behind file. It's going to look at these run at tags to see if there's any uh, ASP code that needs to be interpreted and there's none in head, but inside of this form, there is an ASP label. It will grab the default.aspx.vb, the code behind file, and it will see that on page load, there is an event. And that event is to write into that label, into the text property of that label, this particular string, and it'll do so. So let's view it in the browser. And it's happening as we expect it to.